All right, so I have a secret to tell you. Believe it or not, Nigerian medical schools are among the hardest in the world. Let me back up a bit. Now, I was trying to look at the research, hmm? you know, because many a time, many of the universities here in Nigeria don't have many of the advanced training tools or teaching aids we have around the world we have to do things a lot of times manually now i don't know about india and some other places but i want to believe the majority of those places are having some of those developments so many times what we do here is practically based on theory we do a lot of theoretical work i mean <laughs> see in nigeria here you have to try and a lot of things mentally you have to try and imagine the vein you have to try and imagine where the blood vessels are you have to try and imagine i was watching a video recently of someone who was trying to take a blood sample from someone and um, i saw that they used this vein finder that was the first time i had seen a vein finder and i was like wow i, I can you imagine and it was so simple but here you come and you are going to search and search you can spend up to 30 minutes searching for a vein okay that's one aspect okay let's go to the academic aspect itself here in nigeria see i don't know it might be the same thing abroad but not as bad as it is here see they are they are actually lecturers there are people that will tell you that you have failed until proven otherwise i don't know if that makes any sense you failed until proven otherwise what that means is that no matter what you are going to say you've already failed and by the slim chance that you're able to say something that does impress your lecturer and it does pass you then good for you you are lucky now you see the problem with this is that rather than grappling with acquiring knowledge a lot of us here we just want to not pass the exams and we are faced with a lot of fear mental stress because imagine having to read so many courses at the same time having to internalize this knowledge yes a good number of people have done it but don't forget not everyone works the same way a good number of people have committed suicide falling out of medical school simply because they could not meet up to this criteria not that they would not have made good doctors at the end of the day but there was so much stress put upon them now generally speaking medical training everywhere is quite stressful because you have to internalize a lot of things now imagine having that added stress upon upon everything i was talking with a friend who was telling me that um, med school abroad what they do is that they the way they write their exams because here we write it in many times four parts we have the part one part two part three and part four but abroad after they finished a particular area in of study for example osteology they write osteology not that they write the whole general anatomy i don't know if that's the general practice everywhere but that sounded sensible to me because when you do things like that you break it and you give the person enough time to internalize rather than just coming to do a crash program which many people end up crashing at the end of the day so see it's a lot of pressure it's a lot of stress seriously and I think that is one issue that needs to be addressed. I feel personally that there needs to be a, the whole curriculum has to be written. Like it has to be reviewed. They have to check for ways that it can be made better. Ways that the curriculum can be addressed to meet current day practices and needs. Yes, it might be difficult to get some of the teaching aids and materials that we see. Sometimes we don't even have these teaching aids. Project as simple and basic as a projector is some places don't have projectors to use to teach their students they still have to go through the manual method of teaching some people don't have all these projections that you can use some people don't even use slides it's 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 surprising they still detect you see some lecturers they will come with one old brown looking notes one ancient notes and i'm like do you even review <laughs> do you review your materials do you review your content because i mean knowledge is changing and many a times you may even bring some of this new knowledge maybe you read something new and you tell it to your lecturer we tell you that's not what i know of course it's correct but truly that's not what he knows because he has not been reading up he's not current based on current practices and you know you can fail because of that i heard of a colleague once who runs wrote an exam now because of the slight degree of subjectivity in medical practice he was good he wrote his exam he wrote the OSCE very well he clicked a, a patient i think it was his long case he presented to a lecturer the lecturer scored him even after doing a very good job just because he could not do urinary system examination the lecturer gave him below the lowest score now this is someone that is good then another person that met another lecturer who was quite jovial playful and that he didn't even do so much but he gave him one of the highest scores so you see you are like 
how how do these two things relate and this is exactly the reason why a lot of people still keep going with the claim that school is not generally a true test of knowledge because of instances like this of course the statement itself has its fallacies but in this setting it applies because if it's not equal along all terrains then of course how do you not prove or convince me that school is a true test of knowledge and this is a problem so i don't really know what is going to be the general solution because the problem is that i don't know if people are listening are people listening to the cries of medical students especially those in nigeria because the system the curriculum is quite tedious it doesn't even allow many time for extracurricular activities see here for many of the people that are involved in extracurricular activities it's at your own peril because if anything should happen they will blame you that is that what you were sent to school to do actually yes i see um foreign students doing exchange programs having a lot of attending conferences and doing wonderful things because it's not just all about book medical school is not all about read book 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 you have to learn financial skills you have to learn how to be an orator you have to learn how to talk there are so many things you have to learn but if the system doesn't provide for that how then do you learn it at the end of the day you are going to come out of the system and see yourself as being half bit you're you're going to see people and you're going to wonder how did these people do this i remember seeing a young doctor i think from germany she was just 21 she, i can't remember the exact date but i know she was very young maybe something between 21 and 25 and she was already a consultant that is how it's supposed to be i think 21 yes she had a phd sorry she wasn't a consultant she had a phd and i was like someone 21 years already has a phd that is how it's supposed to be but who is going to listen to you when you are going to tell these people these things that's the problem who is listening who is listening and there are many more awesome things like this i don't know i hope someone watches this video and we need to start a discussion can the nigerian medical school be made better rather than imposing these measures that don't make the system any better but rather just make it frightening why don't we think of a system that is going to make our medical students good enough to compete with those outside nigeria